How's it going everyone? Liam Caddison here and we're on episode number 13, I believe, of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is called The Zeppo. Last episode, Liam got a bit mad. Liam got frustrated. I'd say bit is an understatement considering how much of a rant I went on about uh, the Watcher's Council, but uh, hopefully we'll be having none of that, though it will be very interesting to see how... Um, Giles' role to the show, he's still going to be with Buffy, but um, how his relationship, how uh, just him in general changes after after that situation, um, especially since the Watchers have assigned a new, uh, a new um, Watcher for, for Buffy, um, and he can't interfere in uh, the affairs between Buffy and her new Watcher, so yeah. Um, but yeah, with that said, let's just delve right into this episode. This is episode number 13 for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Let's go. Oh, I'm fine. The, the shaking is, is a side effect of the fear. Thank you. Well, if it wasn't for that clouding spell. Yeah, it went good. Nothing melted like last time. These babes were wicked. Like dry. last time? What's their deal? Wish I knew. Please tell me that was just papers That's and fine. ornaments so rather than innocent people. See. Council has relieved me of my duties. I hope we can expect more of that kind. Oh, I hope mm. not. They're way too fit. Well, I say bring them on. Uh, Zada, you nearly uh, got yourself killed, uh, apparently. In the future, perhaps it would be best if you, you uh, hung back to the rear of the battle for your, for your own sake. But gee, Mr. Yeah, Wayne, like a wizard. If Clark and Lois get all the good stories, I'll never be a good reporter. Hmm? <laughs> Jimmy Olsen jokes are pretty much going to be lost on you, huh? Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm going to kick your ass till it's a brand new shape. And get out of here. Don't think that's how physic works, but Dude, you look nice, but Boy, of all the humiliations you've had. Your attitude witnessed, not nice. I could have taken him. Oh please. O'Toole would macrame your face. He is a psycho. Slayer, werewolf, witches, vampires, and you're like this little nothing. You must feel like Jimmy Olsen. I was just talking to Oh, hey, oh Cordelia. The boy that had no cool. I happen to be an integral part of that group. Though Jimmy Olsen and Supergirl. Oh, please. I do. Integral part of the group? I gotta learn an instrument. Is it hard to play guitar? Oh, God. That's the way I play it. Okay, but on the other hand, eighth grade, I'm taking the flugelhorn and getting zero trim. So the whole instrument thing could be a mislead. Play the drums you like think. boom, boom, boom. One thing nobody else has. What do I have? An exciting new obsession, which I feel makes it. They intend to open the Hellmouth. No, we Why don't. Not? We don't like that. The one that opens. About twenty feet from where you're standing. Yummy. <laughs> Wolf falls is back. All we know is that the fate of the entire world rests on it. Did you eat all the jellies? Did you want a jelly? <laughs> I always have a jelly. I'm always the one that says, let's have a jelly in the mix. We're oh, sorry. Buffy had three. <gasps> Great knife. Although I think um, it may technically be a, a sword. She's called Katie. You Katie name yours. Oh my God, of course I'll you did. A serial killer of you. That's what I think we should be going. Are you scared? Let's put that away, you psychopath. Well, that make you happy. You woman looking on, you can't stand up to me. Don't you feel pathetic? Two guys wrestling, but not in a gay way. <laughs> Do it somewhere else, huh? <laughs> wow, he's actually covering for him. What? That was all right. Could have narked on me. Didn't do it. It's decent of you. Might go all back to that fear like talk you. as well. Like you did that in an act of fear. Yay? You two want to have some fun? Buddy. Uh, Who's that guy from The Walking Dead? Big hideous corpse. Come here! I'll call you. Man! You. Nostra space sola es. No that went well. They go find Angel. Go somewhere quiet together. Be thinking about how I want to spend my last night on Earth. 
Don't be a party pooper, Willie. See, this is how you celebrate. No. We'll wing it. That's nah, you with us now. Oh yeah, man. You on team now, baby. Woo! Shows that just like yeah. Some interesting suggestions, but I'm gonna have to go with Dickies. Let's bake a cake. Let's go bake the cake. I don't know why I was thinking. Let's go fly kite or not. I wasn't gone ten minutes before he raised me. Right. That's why he doesn't look. Let's right. go, Xander. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, man, you can be a full-fledged member then. Come on, Xander. Take it like a man. All right, enough. You guys have had your fun, but you forgot about one thing. Ah, oh, yeah. There goes the wheels. You took all our stuff, man. You can bake your you cake here. Cake. It's all right. We'll get Might be a little hard, but... This is the weirdest crime ever. I'm suddenly very up. I bet you are. It's just, um, I've never been up with people before. Oh, God. Relax. Take your pants off. Well, those two concepts are antithetical. Oh, this is a dream. This is surely a dream. He's actually going... Okay, okay. Well. That was great. I got a shower. Well. Jesus, again, he's getting... Oh, uh, is Jal still conscious? I thought he was going to get knocked out again. Good job. I gotta move him before he wakes up. Sorry. I hope you're not mad at me in the morning. Oh, Willow. No, no, no. I love you. I love you. Nothing can change that. Not even death. Don't talk to me like that. We're not doing this song and dance again, you okay, but go, buddy? But I am not ready to lose you. Okay, this is my fight. And if you won't do it my way, then you're... <clears throat> <laughs> just look up the music, hey. just cuts off. <laughs> I've got this, um... There's this, uh... Oh, God, that's really, really hard. <laughs> Jesus. It's in the boiler room. All right. Now I'm gonna ask you this once. Okay, you better pray you get the answer. Okay, okay. Oh, How do I do? <laughs> I probably should have left out that whole middle part. Yeah. Oh my god, it's grown. Oh god, is it that thing from the end of season one again? No. This is crazy. <laughs> oh! Oh, he got his he head caved in again, didn't he? <laughs> Should have learned by now. If you're gonna play with fire, you gotta expect sooner or later. <laughs> I wasn't finished! <laughs> Note to self, let's talk. <laughs> you try to be quippy. Jesus. Okay. Who's that? Boiler room. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I do. Yeah, it looks like. So I guess the question really is who has less fear? I'm not afraid. Oh, to die. reverse that I'm question. Dead. Yeah, but this is different. Being blowed up isn't walking around and drinking with your buddies dead. Are you? 13. I like the quiet. I like the... Nice. Look at hell. I mean, it should have been blown up by now, like... 
the right thing. Thanks to Xander, though. Good boy. The first time you turn your back. Ah! Oh, that's what it. Oh, no. Even after the hell mouth was closed. Oh, boy. I can still hear it screaming. But Angel's gonna be okay. I was only out for a few minutes. Longest of my life. No, I'm oddly full today. Okay. He just cops out a finger. Oh, look, it's Mr. Excitement. On another life or death donut mission, or are we just cruising for bim? What? What? He likes the quiet. What? You know what I'm Own it. Like, if. You're not, you don't need to have like some kind of spontaneous personality like slaying or werewolves and all of that. Um, sometimes, yeah, you just embrace the quiet and it deals less damage than, I don't know, being a psycho, for example, like Jack. Uh, or, or just being, I guess, annoying, or, or all the negative traits. You just want to... Like, that's the thing. I think Xander is trying his best to be a good person. Um, and hopefully, now that he's come to that realisation that um, he's okay with who he is, yes, it's not as spontaneous, but I like the quiet. Um, hopefully he, like... I don't know, like, we've had moments, in, like, we've had Xander-centric episodes before where this could, there could be elements taken that um, can carry on throughout the episode. So, yeah, but, um, like, I, I was hoping maybe he will, he will take that quieter approach. Like, not, not as in he is no longer going to be a main uh, character, but, yeah, he doesn't need to try to stand out and all of that, I guess. Um, like here, he he doesn't need to stand out. Like as he's proving with Cordelia, uh, and he smiles walking away. He doesn't need to prove to have like some kind of spontaneous personality. He's happy, and and plus he did help out um, with the whole um, saving the school situation, anyways, because um, he pers he persuaded Jack not uh, to do the right thing. He persuaded him to do the right thing. So, yeah, uh, he's still very, very much important. Um, and he's still a very essential member to this to this crew. Um, but maybe he doesn't need to be spontaneous. So, yeah. Um, I've just realized I'm Xander. And I don't think that's a good thing either. <laughs> no, I will get more on about that in a, like in my um, recap. But that was that was one of the coolest episodes they've done. Like they made it a, a POV of Xander, um, because you'd think usually with this crisis looming, with the Hellmouth o Hellmouth opening, them talking about it, we'd be focused on that in this episode. But we were all Xander, like we we only got a brief bit of detail about. Um, well, that's the thing. Xander only got a brief bit of detail uh, in the episode in for his character, and we only got a brief snippet of what the Scoobies were up to. So we were Xander in this episode where we missed out on all the shenanigans and well, not just that though. We're not just Xander. We're like, um, everyone else. We are everyone who attends Sunnydale school. Cause, um, they won't know about how hard it was to, to stop all hell from breaking loose. Literally. Uh, it's just another day. It's just another normal school day for these people. And that's it. Like we will never know. So, I really like that concept they utilized in this episode. Um, but I just love it though. Like there was a lot of dramatic cuts and then we, and then we snap back to Xander. A lot of dramatic, like there was dramatic uh, moments between Angel and Buffy as they were, as Angel was contemplating death again, goes to Xander. 
So, yeah, I really love the focus that we had with uh, perspective driven to Xander's st- side of the story. Um, and how he was, and how he was trying to find his identity. He was having that identity crisis, and um, I'm glad that he's fully accepted um, his role now in life. His, I guess, raise like his raison d'être to to the uh, to to others. I really loved how this episode did focus on Xander's insecurities. And how I feel like he has, I'll just tilt that up, um, how he has uh, progressed, especially by the end of this episode. Um, it was a very, very interesting way of how they produced this episode, uh, which I'll get on to more in a minute. But um, I really, really loved how we had so much focus driven to Xander um, with his crisis about him being a useless asset to the Scoobies and he was on his own personal journey to find his identity to to find what makes him stand out as Cordelia was like this warning signal throughout the episode um basically subconscious well for Xander subconscious telling him to to step it up a notch uh in terms of trying to find his identity and find out what um his his purpose to the group uh where where that is but um um, I really did like the fact that um, as this episode did close out, he fa- we found out, I feel, that he was more than just useless. Like, he might not be a slayer, he might not be a werewolf, but he does have importance, and I will talk about that deeper in a, in a moment. Um, and without him, like, and this is, like, true to the case, he did save Buffy and Co. Because they would have been little uh, pieces of um, ash and whatnot in the remnants of Sunnydale School. Um, because he was the one to persuade uh, Jack. And nobody even knew about what Jack and Co. were doing. So, um, yeah, I, I really like how... Not just the fact that he did prove how valuable he is to the Scoobies, but also how he chose to keep uh, to keep the whole shebang with him uh, and Jack. To like, he decided to keep that for himself. He could have, uh, and this is the thing. I feel like Xander previously has always been a guy who has sought that attention. I mean, we even got a bit of it in this episode. Um, and since that line, I like the quiet. Um, like I'm, and I'm hoping that does resonate throughout the rest of this season and then the next season, etc. But um, yeah. Ever since that line, I feel like there's been a a, a switch that has flicked for for Xander. But as I said, he's been a guy that does crave for the uh, for the attention, whether it's with Buffy and how he pulls, um her away i guess essentially from other guys who interact with her or like i said earlier on in this episode when uh, he wanted to play football and nobody was batting an eye that was xander who who does love the the spotlight being focused on him but i liked the idea that he said i like the quiet and then when everyone was gushing about uh, the hell mouth and that opening and uh, how they managed to save the world. Xander had the opportunity to gloat about the fact that he he also saved Sunnydale School as well. Um, and he could have gained traction there, but he chose not to. He chose the quiet. And even when Cordy was, was um, taunting him at the very end, didn't bat an eye. So he was very, very comfortable where he was. And I was I, at that moment um, when, like... Um, when he was saying, I like the choir and he found his place and whatnot, uh, I kind of like, and, and not just that, but the events of this episode as well, uh, with him having his identity issues, I found myself in, in, uh, a bit of, um, Xander's shoes. And you guys know that like when a show hits a subject, um, that is personal, I do like to, to do a bit of story time. Uh, because I think that it makes the connection a lot more potent. 
and I was, uh, and I like to think of myself as, uh, uh, as someone who was in Xander's shoes anyways, like for this episode, like not in general, because I like, of course we're going to have at least one bad trait, but I don't want to be obnoxious to the level of Xander. And, um, yeah, I, I want to be, um, like that good person towards others and, and be, uh, helpful and all that jazz but um i have my own uh click of friends anyways uh, we have like this group and i do love them to death so much and um i think recently i've chosen the quiet because it's less confusing because as someone who um has autism and has to structure words carefully in, in my mind because um otherwise i feel like it's going to confuse people and whatnot um, I feel like the quiet benefits for me because like all my friends, like they are easy to string a sentence together. Like it, like it's like, it's like spreading butter basically. And then there's me who does have that hard time, uh, putting a sentence together. Um, because, um, I, like I said, I have to bridge the words carefully and all of that because that's how my brain i guess operates um and there are t- and i'm still very very social uh, don't get me wrong but sometimes when i do speak to um to, to people in general but my friends especially sometimes i worry my autism gets the best of me and uh, uh i say confusing sentences uh, because there's a part of my brain that um warn that that signals a little siren that says you're confusing them because uh, in my perception it it feels like they are raising a a confused uh, face so it gets a bit panicky doesn't it so um and i feel like choosing the quiet is uh, it's going to present less confusion but i can still um i can still interact of course but uh i i choose to like um pick my uh, bide my time per- um, perfectly like speak at the right opportunity and i do hope like explaining this isn't as confusing as um i've made an example i guess but um um another area that i do feel like i resonate with xander in this episode is uh identity issues uh where C- uh, cordy was saying well buffy's a slayer oz is a werewolf etc etc um and i do feel that with my friends because i because in my mind i could associate traits to to my friends like um oh this person's the funny one this person is uh is the intellectual one uh, of the group and i do struggle to put a number on myself like where do i fit in terms of of um the group and i don't want to i don't want to speak for myself because um um i i let my friends um i guess be the judge of me uh because i'm a very harsh critic of myself i i because i will criticize myself more than compliment myself that's how that's how i work really but um i know there's been a few people who um have said that i do have the like they all do have heart as well. Don't get me wrong, but um, I've had a few comments about how I offer so much heart and whatnot. Um, like I said, they might have a di- like I said, they might have a different um, analysis of, of of where I stand. So uh, I don't want to speak for them, but um, I say that because I think Xander is truly the heart of. Um, this group with the fact that there's been instances where he like he does put his mouth above his heart um but this episode focused on like where xander lies especially and he talked jack into disarming the bomb and how he made he 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 has made threats before um like for to buffy example if willow is dead i will kill you uh back in season two episode one um like you don't need superpowers to have a, an assigned role to a group. Um, kind, well, I would say kind of like Dick Grayson in Titans. I mean, his power lies in his strength, but I also feel like he has that um, compassion, that maturity um, and that leadership. So yeah, 
but I'm just thinking back to episode five of Titan season one, where everyone was showcasing their powers. Dick doesn't have those powers though, does he? So yeah. Um, but that's what I think um, Xander is. I think Xander's specialty is his heart. So yeah. And I do want to see a, a lot more of that, especially with that ending broadcasted throughout the entirety of uh, Buffy, the remaining episodes left, of, I guess, of Buffy, uh, which is a very, very grim way of saying it, but um, you get what I mean. I want this to be a, a thing of continuity, so yeah. Um, I can see people not liking this. I, I don't know why, but uh, I can see people not liking this episode with the fact that the Hellmouth was opening. And this is a really, really big thing. Uh, this is not something you would typically skirt past. But I think it works well with Buffy. And I think that like with with shows like with Buffy, they they uh, provide a point. I've like there's been many cases in Buffy the Vampire Slayer already that there has been a real world um, lesson taught to the viewers. And I think the thing is, we're supposed to be, I guess, Sander or, or the students, like when, when they were gushing over the events of what happened in, uh, with the Hellmouth, um, and they were events that we did not see, and we were like, oh, why was Angel out for a few minutes, etc. I think we were supposed to be in that place. Um, and I think if we replaced um, the Hellmouth and that opening with something lesser, for example, uh, if we did not have like a crisis end of the world event happening, I think the point would lose its strength personally. So uh, I think they needed something like crisis-y to um, showcase that point alongside Xander's own story uh, and that we are the students like we will never know what happened like them that like for for the students for everyone who I guess is not a part of the show um they went to bed got school in the morning good night woke up didn't even contemplate the idea that the world could be ending and I think that is what we were supposed to to be like we were supposed to be left outside the scooby's bubble for this episode so yeah um we had faith and xander hitting things off as well which surprised me um but i guess it's that uh, maturity i guess like him losing his virginity so yeah um but no i had a feeling faith and xander would hit things off when we got super super intense and not just that but um, Faith has been adamant about the fact that slaying uh, gets her horny. So, yeah, uh, there's no attraction, as, as exemplified by the fact that uh, she, like, we had that, um, we had that cut scene where she, it was very, very intense, and then, boom, I'm gonna take a shower. Bye, whatever. So, yeah, uh, I mean, it was technically wrong because I feel like. Faith took advantage of Xander, but also this was a very, very bizarre scene as well, because there, like before this scene, there was just layers of hecticness all over, and that wasn't even the tip of the iceberg in terms of the hecticness. Um, like, what I really, really loved about this episode was how we had the mood set, especially with the score of, the, of, of this episode. And then instantly, we cut to like it would it would snap the music would cut off there wasn't a fade out or anything the scene would snap uh yeah like even when they were having the the situation with the hellmouth uh like we saw giles and co just battling that stranger things demon and um we cut to xander we cut to xander so like just in an instant like in something that should be intense to focus on cut so yeah i like how the cuts worked in this episode um i also liked a bit of oz and xander as well in this episode uh especially with how the fallout like how i thought the fallout would uh of um the whole willow xander affair would um put oz off for example he's pretty pretty chill has this um uh, sarcastic banter towards xander so i feel like um it's great that we're seeing their relationship continue um and how 
Oz isn't completely ignoring him. He's just being Oz. Um, as well as Werewolf, which he was in this episode. Um, also like the fact that we had... Um, we had Giles, uh, a bit of focus on Giles, uh, especially with the la- the events of the last episode, and what he is doing after being released from being a watcher, and how he's still helping the best he can. We got a bit of, uh, we got a bit of focus on that, which I really, really, uh, I thought they handled it really, really well in an episode that focused on the POV of Xander. Um, like your your minds are like curious with the idea of. Okay, so how is Giles going to be um, of help to Buffy and the co since he's been relieved of his duties? He's still going to be a librarian, but he's not going to be the Watcher. So it was great to see Giles doing the best he can, being limited on um, what he can do. So, yeah. Um, We, well, first off, I want to say Cordy's Jimmy Olsen comment, like comparing... Xander to Jimmy doesn't age well if you've watched Supergirl because he's Guardian, so he's his own hero there. Um, which I know that's flagged a bit of controversy, and um, because that's not Jimmy Olsen, but I mean, Zoom was supposed to be Reverse Flash 2.0 in the comics, and he was a different incarnation, so figures. Um, <laughs> but um, no, I really loved the um, antagonist of this episode. He was very eccentric, inc- uh, Jack. And yeah, he was very threatening to get stabby stabby when Xander hit him with a car and then revealed, wasn't mine, uh, wasn't mine, raised his friends from the dead, Pretty standard, isn't it? No. Um, I thought he was a very interesting and eccentric character. I really liked him. Very attractive. And um, I really helped. I really thought that he helped Xander's story progress a lot more since Xander, for example, was forced into that group he wasn't comfortable with. And you had that you're useless to the Scoobies comment ringing in his head. So he was in a bit of a bind on what to do. Um the gang were pretty bizarre as well. Um, like, I thought they were very, very um, eccentric as well. Um, and there were some eccentric scenes that played out, especially when Xander wanted information from one of uh, the zombie guys. And uh, um, whilst he was interrogating, his head smacked off the um, mail post. So I really, really loved that. Um, I also thought, like... <sighs> yeah... I loved, I would have loved it if the cake mix was a thing in this episode. Like, okay, so why are these guys robbing us all? It's just for cake mix. Because, like I said, this episode was really bizarre in terms of the cuts and how things progressed. And I think the cake mix would take the cake. Had to. No, but um, it makes sense for um, Xander's own story for it to be a bomb. He can save the school. Doesn't even... Although, then again, you could have deadly cake. Yeah. Um, but, um, it makes sense for Xander's character, of Xander's story, to... Uh, for it to be a bomb. So he can save the school, save the Scoobies, and, um, not tell anyone about it, and thus showing his growth, so, yeah, but, um, still, you've got to think, what if, um, but, yeah, this was a really, really good episode, I also liked the callback, um, with Jack's line about fear, and how that was, like, uh, you know, reverse card, I guess, um, but, uh, yeah, that was a great, uh, there were some great lines, like I said, um, I like the quiet, it's, it's probably my favorite line, but, um, uh, like I said, that line, uh, that callback was was really, really greatly utilized further into the episode. Um, and I also thought that Angel, um, speaking about Buffy, about sacrificing himself to save the world. Of course, that's remnants to becoming part two. But I thought it was giving me, uh, it was kind of giving me flashbacks to amends um, as well. So, yeah. But like I said, it was a really good episode focusing on Xander. Um, really grew uh, grew his character, I feel, and hopefully we'll see that transition throughout um, Buffy. Like I like the quiet, yeah. So, um, but I really liked how much focus we got on Xander in this episode. It was a, a it was a pretty pretty. I thought, like I said, this was the best Xander centric story. I feel with not just. 
like how he managed to grow personally, but um, what they managed to do with this episode, they made it bizarre. They had, uh, we had a situation with the Hellmouth, but that was in the background. Um, so yeah, I really thought this was a really, really um, super episode. But yeah, I will see you guys next time. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. You can check my videos on the right if you want to check out more of my content. You can also subscribe to my media feeds and channel if you want to. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Hope you guys take care and I will see you guys next time. Toodles!